Hello everyone! We are, as you know, been sending out a series of Talk Fusion videos and we're going to be bouncing around from different topic to topic. Um, in this new series, it's going to be on the underwater wood business. Yep, you guessed it. We're back in the underwater wood business and right now as we're setting up the new operation, a conventional lumber mill with the old underwater wood, we want to bring you on a little journey back in time. Uh, back in time when the clips were shot and back in time of what they were shot for and about. It's pretty spectacular. We have a whole series of these. I hope you enjoy them. I know you guys down in Florida definitely will. Um, as I hold this beautiful piece of bird's eye maple from the first bird's eye maple log I ever brought up, let's take a look back at some of the things that were made from this wood. Enjoy these clips. The lumberjacks worked for a dollar a day, and boy, did they work. Despite the harsh conditions, they cut all year round, softwoods and hardwoods, but many of them went straight to the bottom. Caught up in massive log jams, the big ones got wetter and wetter until they were simply too heavy to float. Thousands and thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands went to the bottom. You know, when you're talking each mill cutting up millions of board feet per year, their annual yield, 10 to 20 percent going to the bottom. You're talking a whole lake bed of wood. So even when they knew the logs were going to the bottom, they just kept rafting the hardwoods. Oh, yes, but it was an inexhaustible resource, they thought back then. All right, we'll go cut a few more out of the woods and worry about a few that go to the bottom every year. So, three years ago, Scott Mitchin began to salvage the lost forest of North America. How did you bring up the very first log? The very first log we brought up uh, with an inner tube. I stacked 500 logs by myself with inner tubes. Going in, taking the inner tube down with an extra tank, filling the, uh, hooking the inner tubes onto the log, filling them up. Scott's treasure hunt is a bit easier now that he's refined the process. He hammers a spike into each log, then attaches an airbag. With the turn of a valve, compressed air raises the log from where it's lain for a century. A lot of people thought Scott was mad when he started salvaging these logs. After so long at the bottom, they had to be rotten. But remarkably, most of them are in great condition. Why are the logs so well preserved after so long under the water? Well, it's the low oxygen content in Lake Superior, the icy cold waters. Um, it's, it's a perfect uniform condition to uh, preserve these logs. It's soaked to the core, but after it's been oven dried, this will be some of the most valuable timber on earth, almost priceless. You just won't find hardwoods like this anymore because these took hundreds of years to grow in the shade of the old growth forest. This is going to be a, an oldie. It's easy to prove how old these logs are. You count the growth right, rings, one for every year. As it got bigger, she started growing slower and slower and slower. And for a good 100 years probably here, it grew consistent, the same, same size year after year. But then after that, you're going on you know, over 200 years old. It starts really slowing down. In the last 40 years, you've got an inch here. So for the last 40 years of this tree, she grew extra, extra slow. The tree was probably 500, 525 years old. And you talk about another 125 sitting on the bottom. So the whole log would be worth thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah, a, 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 a tree or a log like this um, is definitely going to fetch thousands. Every time you open up one of these logs, there's a wonderful surprise. It's the kind of timber that inspires craftsmen to create. There it is. There it is. Right there. <laughs> 
And the treasure chest opens up. You're looking for the white instead of the green streaks. Mark Price is going to use this richly figured maple to make guitars. I'm going to cut each piece, shape each piece, sand each piece, finish each piece. Uh, this is going to be an entire process. It's going to be done by hand. This is, this is too incredible to uh, take this, and each one's going to be just spectacular. Just been notified today that they need two right away for the Eagles um, to use and be the first of the two of a series of a thousand. So we're all excited about the instrument market in general. After all of their songs about lost love, you can bet the Eagles will come up with at least one good tune about the lost forest. But if your taste is more classical, you might like a violin made from that ancient wood. In the backwoods of Wisconsin, John Wan's workshop is full of beautiful dreams some finished, some still taking shape in the wood. If I hold it exactly on the yep. note. It rings. If I move my finger so that it's a little off of the harmonic node, it's dissonant. John can turn any bit of wood into music. But when we brought him a piece of maple from the lost forest, he said this wood deserved the hands of a master, and he would make me a beautiful nice. violin. You know, this is really nice wood. It's fancy. You could make a violin as good as Stradivarius out of this. Well, there are thousands of logs at the bottom of that lake, some of them with timbers, the types of trees that just don't grow right? anymore. Well, bring me some more of this wood, will you? A little bit. I would like to make a couple of fiddles out of it. And you feel you've got a couple of masterpieces in those hands? Yes. Salvaging what's left of America's old forest is not the end of this story. Scott is finding a kind of treasure most people have simply forgotten about. And to him, it's a reminder of just how fast the world's great forests are disappearing. As time goes on and you see less and less of uh, the virgin forest and you see less and less of the, the woods in general, we feel good about every tree that we bring up is possibly saving two or three from being cut down. And, uh, you know, in this age of recycling, we've got to turn our energies and look forward look for ways to utilize these otherwise wasted resources. You know, this is not a renewable one. When this is gone, it's gone. We want to make it last. <laughs>